Alright, welcome back everyone to another Oculus Quest session and uh, today we'll be trying out Founders Pitch VR. Click next for instructions to start and the experience. Okay, looks like I'm standing up. Founders Pitch VR puts you in a room with virtual investors. and They'll be asking you questions about your venture. An on-screen prompt will identify when it is your turn to speak and remind you what question was asked. When you are finished answering a question, silently count off three seconds and the next virtual investor will ask you a next question. Present to virtual investors as many times as you want. Enjoy the experience. All right, let's do this. So uh, I guess a lot of startups are trying to figure out what the best use case for a VR is. So they've come up with this. Whoa, hey, one of those guys on the phone. This guy's asleep. Is listening. What kind of experience do you want today? Holy crap, look at that. Look at these jarring eyes. Executive summary, less questions, or due diligence, longer, more questions. Let's go exec summary first. Thanks for taking the time to be here today. Tell us, what does your company do? So, Transhumanism Australia is an education and investment platform. It's essentially trying to find a way to help everyone on the journey of emerging technologies because right now that knowledge gap is a missed opportunity and putting them at a competitive disadvantage. By allowing the education and technology platform an investment platform for everyone to jump on board, this allows that access and realization and acceleration of the singularity and the transhumanist movement essentially wants to achieve. The founders are myself, uh, my partner Elise, and uh, a team that we've co-founded over the last five years. Brendan Clark, who essentially is a co-founder of Transhumanism Australia, works in IT at the Commonwealth Bank of Australia. We have Leo Maybe, uh, Leandro Brun, who's essentially also a chief architect and cybersecurity expert at uh, the, uh, the TAFE New South Wales, and he's also had a history of emerging tech investments as well as uh, investments in Bitcoin and the like. We also have Ian Wolf, who runs Diffusion Radio. Essentially, he actually has a lot of scientific knowledge that he's been sharing on his radio platform for the last 10 years. And as a community of transhumanists in Sydney, we've actually started this initiative over the last five years, building the trust among our co-founders, and now we're ready to build out this essential platform. What is the actual addressable market? The addressable market are those that are currently not having access to these uh, executive level technology educations. So things like uh, your, your typical uh, worker that's uh, an employee that can afford, say, a subscription service, but essentially can't afford the $3,000 plus type conference tickets that are on sale at the moment that are targeting the executives. So essentially the things like, um, you know, these uh, large conferences. It's almost like creating an, uh, a, um, it's called a, instead of an abundance mindset, it's a scarcity business model. For us, we try to make that accessible so it's affordable, but in terms of the knowledge and accessibility of that technology, um, it's kind of trying to address the non executives of the world who can go on this journey. And so essentially, our market is the entirety of the people that can afford the subscription that are not across these emerging technologies, but want to be, and uh, the ones that are not already in that C-suite level that are affording these $1,000 know, conferences. Why do you think there's fear about the Why users care about it? Because they know that without being caught on to these technologies, they'll be at a competitive disadvantage to their peers. So someone that doesn't know, for example, the use of artificial intelligence in their day-to-day -day work, whether it's you know rules-based uh, robotic process automation or more advanced sort of machine learning type that they can incorporate into their work to help them make predictions better. These are the sort of things that without that knowledge puts them at a competitive disadvantage to a peer that can use these. It's almost as if back in the days, you know, when uh, the you know, Google search engine first came out, the people that were able to use Google better essentially were ahead of their peers in accessing knowledge and research. Um, and now, because the technologies are moving so fast in terms of AI, robotics, biotechnology, and uh, virtual reality, and, and the Internet of Things, 
people are essentially falling behind and not being able to use these tools to stay competitive. Um, so that's the sort of reason why we're uh, essentially the users would care about our offering, but also essentially they would be welcoming it once they actually have an affordable price point to access that information. Who are your company's competitors? Our competitors at the moment are the sort of online courses that are you know, out there like Coursera and the other education platforms. What makes us different is that uh, we're essentially addressing the movement of transhumanists. We are essentially trying to create this sort of tailor design to make sure that we can have the best experts onto the platform you know, pr in a practical way that they can apply into their world, but also a dedicated uh, pool of people that are uh, essentially powering on around this movement. Um, so we actually already have a very uh, sort of loyal um, a, a group of people that have been paid subscriptions to Transhumanism Australia. What we actually need for that is to scale out because right now uh, we're supporting those subscribers with you know physical events. Uh, we're running these uh, physical meetups and we're doing you know, YouTube videos and things but essentially it's still tied to uh, physical time and materials. What this education investment platform will do is essentially create that sort of environment where we can make that scalable, a repeatable uh, sort of uh, platform. Um, we can also pull the subscription money as well as co -found, uh, crowdfunding money into transhumanist uh, research and, uh, uh, and projects to be able to fund these you know, movements. So right now, transhumanism as a movement um, is quite uh, disparate in different countries and different sort of parts. So people have different ideas of what transhumanism is. Uh, transhumanism is. A platform like this will allow to everyone to come in and pull their knowledge and agree on what sort of things that we should be focusing on, whether it's longevity, whether it's artificial intelligence, and whether it's well-being, improving the wellness of everyone in the world to, on that journey to transcending our human biology through technology. Uh, be purely online at the moment. So we're essentially using that sort of uh, growth hacking technologies um, you know, through our social media. We already have 2,000 plus uh, likes on Facebook. We have uh, 20,000 followers on Twitter. We have 2,700 subscribers on YouTube. Uh, we have Instagram followers in that sort of similar range as well. So essentially, uh, we already have the online presence and the uh, the movement already behind us. So it's uh, millions of people around the world that are following transhumanism and it's about activating those people into uh, a tangible result through this education investment platform. So we can all get behind it and actually create real projects and fund them while in real life. What early traction has the company got like for sales, traffic, your website? Yeah, so we've already mentioned the traction we've got in terms of the followings on our socials. Uh, we've already got paid subscriptions uh, in the hundreds of dollars uh, every month in terms of uh, uh, the loyal followings. And to be able to scale that up, it's essentially requiring that sort of a platform to create um, the dedicated following and increase that market. So the, the essential funding that we're trying to get is to accelerate that. We already know that it's been a proven area that we can scale up. So now it's actually building it and getting it out there. Principal risk would be uh, the sort of disparate nature. If it's completely decentralized, it still requires uh, the leadership to move uh, the movement as well as the platforms in the right direction. So yeah, we do still have key pe people risk uh, in our team, uh, but essentially we want to be able to move that to be a more uh, self-governing movement uh, going forward. So we want to have a voting system for all the subscribers to uh, initiate where the project goes and which sort of projects are being funded. So right now it'll be uh, still based on the crowdfunding, but also because the money that we'll be uh, pulling together uh, as a clip of every crowdfund, every subscription service, we'll put to that pool and how that pool is spent will be determined by the subscribers. So this will put the power in the hands of subscribers themselves and that will do um, uh, de-risk a lot of the key people risk we have right now. And the technology is moving so fast, that's probably the constant adapting of the content which will require. So we need to also find ways to automate the way that we uh, bring that information together 
but also the projects that will be self-funded and uh, so crowdfunded by the people in the community. Yeah, so we have domain names, the transhumanism.com.au. Uh, in terms of patents and trade secrets, we don't have that. Uh, essentially, it is a community movement, and uh, what we really need is the sort of the platform to bring it all together. So right now, there are platforms like Facebook and uh, you know the the Twitters and things like that. They're currently uh, operating in the big tech companies, and they don't have the right tools to actually make the movement do what it needs to do. You know, for things like investments, if you look at Indiegogo or GoFundMe, or um, you know, if you look at Kickstarter, it doesn't have that sort of dedicated movement around the the, the rights that it wants to do, the the things, so the targeted projects that you want to fund. Um, you know, people that join our platform as subscribers will essentially know exactly the purpose of those crowd funds, and it gets it into the eyes of the relevant people rather than to everyone. And the algorithms would uh, essentially not um, put that in front of um, those people's eyes. So you essentially, in a Kickstarter, for example, would get drowned out by the volume of these different projects. Whereas uh, on the Transfusions platform, you know that you're targeting the right audience straight away. And with paid subscribers, you know that they are worthy um, to actually want to get behind with them, with their wallets on these projects. What are the companies through your projection? Uh, that's too early to tell, but uh, in terms of three years, we're actually trying to target at least 1,000 paid subscribers. So, you know, if we're looking at roughly $100 per year, that's 100 grand in the first year. And so we're looking to then scale that up on a tenfold basis each year. That's on the, that's the first milestone. We're looking to aim for a Series A in the second year, where we can reach uh, 1 million revenue per year, and then uh, going for a Series B. In the year after that, when we do get that 10 million round. How much is being raised in this round? This round, we're trying to raise $100,000 as a C round, and then uh, we're looking to get that Series A in next year. And that'll be a 10% of the company. What's the company's desired pre money valuation? Yeah, using that mass, it'll be a million dollars. I'm sure you will. <laughs> wow, guys. Well, I feel like I felt that was like almost like a real pitch. <laughs> I'll tell you what, I got nervous in there for sure. Stumbled on some of the answers. I really just made it up on the spot. I didn't know what to expect from this thing. <laughs> so I hope you enjoyed that video and uh, we'll look forward to seeing you at the next one. Peace.